Spec Ops Expeditionary Force Book 2 by Craig Allenson, let's jump straight into the review. Oh, and if you haven't checked out my previous videos on this series, now would be a good time. Continuing on from Columbus Day, Spec Ops practically carries over all the structural elements from its predecessor. Once again, you will find that about 95% of the novel is presented through the point of view of the series' main protagonist, Colonel Joe Bishop of the Merry Band of Pirates, who more or less gives a personal account of events as they happen through a first-person, past-tense narration style. That last 5%, however, is presented through third-person, past-tense prose, and is mostly dedicated to the points of view of some of the other supporting cast of characters on The Flying Dutchman, and this holds especially true to the novel's plentiful combat sequences, much like what you're used to from the finale of the previous book in the series. I guess one of the major changes from Columbus Day is that Spec Ops isn't quite as split into two thematic halves as that book was, which if you remember, was one of my minor complaints in that review. Story-wise, Spec Ops is best described as a space adventure story with heavy military science fiction and comedic undertones. The book starts out by pushing us right into the thick of action, with all our favorite protagonists on the verge of certain death, before pulling the good old you're probably wondering how we got into this mess cliche, and jumping us back in time a little bit to the merry band of pirates back at Earth, just after saving the planet at the conclusion of the last book. From there, the pirates take on new crew and supplies, before going back out into the wider galaxy to protect Earth, and inevitably get caught up in all kinds of trouble. The first third of the novel is overall very slow-paced, this mostly to allow the introduction of the new cast of characters, and in doing so set up a firm foundation for the series going forward. After that, the book quite quickly picks up speed, making our protagonist face the two major challenges of this novel, while also sneaking in a ton of setup for future storylines way further down the line in the series. Moving on to the subgenre composition, it's no big surprise that dramatic elements play a front and center role in this novel's overall structure, given the first-person narration style with its many monologues. But even without those, much of the novel's plot progression is conveyed through various dialogue and brainstorming sequences, which you probably already know and love from Columbus Day. Coming right on the heels of the dramatic elements, we've got the comedy, which is just... perfect. Seriously though, I've reread this particular installment in the series like 10 or 15 times by this point, and to this day, the banter between Joe and Skippy never fails to make me laugh. It's just this perfect balance of silliness and originality, while also managing not to clash with some of the more serious tones and ideas of the novel. As I've mentioned, worldbuilding is a rather important part of Spec Ops. A large amount of it is focused towards the new roster of Merry Band of Pirates, and their initial introductions to the awesomeness of Skippy and the alien equipment they'll be handling through the course of their mission. Alongside that, a lot of world building is also spent on the foreshadowing of future plot points, which will become relevant even 10 books later down the line, but that's verging on spoiler territory, so let's just move on. Last of the core elements is the action, the first snippets of which you'll encounter right from the start of the novel, after which you're gonna have to wait about until one third of the way through the novel before they start popping up again. But from that point on, you're gonna get a bunch of action elements in quick succession until the end of the novel. Most of these set pieces are quite evenly split between space and infantry combat, and you'll find that they have a wide variety of fun and exciting sequences, one of which in particular is quite the blast, if you get what I mean. 
And then at the very end we've got a combination of philosophical and psychological elements to do with one of the main discoveries our protagonists make along their adventure in this book. And this mostly deals with the moral questions the discovery brings up, as well as how our cast of characters reacts to the thing itself. But again, that's spoiler territory. I guess the main conclusion to be made about Spec Ops, Expeditionary Force Book 2, is whether or not this book is worth picking up if you finish the first installment in the series. And my answer to that particular question is a resounding hell yeah. And that holds particularly true if you enjoyed what I'd call the post-skippy portion of Columbus Day, because this novel really is just more of that. As someone who has already read up to the 14th book in the series, as well as with all my numerous rereads of this specific book, I can say that in all of Expeditionary Force, Spec Ops might be one of the more slower-paced installments in the series overall. But on your first read-through, I don't think that's something you'll really notice, because Spec Ops is simply just a really fun and interesting book to read. As I've already mentioned, the comedy in the book is pure gold, the story is very interesting, and the combat sequences are bombastic. And to top it all off, Craig Allenson also incorporates a ton of science into the story, ranging from physics, biology, to geology, so by the time you're finished with Spec Ops, you'll probably be smarter than when you started off. But as always, if my excitement over Spec Ops isn't enough to convince you, here are the book's ratings from the usual sites I feature on these reviews. If, however, my review has managed to tempt you into picking up a copy of Spec Ops, then you might be interested to know that the novel is available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook formats, with the former of the two coming in at a length of about 140,000 words and the audiobook coming in at a length of just under 16 hours. Pricing wise, you can pick up an ebook copy of Spec Ops for a price of just over $7 at the time of recording this video, followed in price by the paperback at $10. Last and most expensive of the three is the audiobook, which comes in at a whopping price of $30 if you buy it out of pocket on Amazon. So in this case, you're clearly better off using an audible credit to make the purchase, since there isn't a whispersing deal available. However, I have also spotted Spec Ops pop up in several Audible 2 for 1 sales, so if you're willing to wait a little bit, you can even snag the audiobook for the effective price of $7.5. But of course, prices might have changed by the time you're watching this video, so I'll leave a handy dandy Amazon link in the description down below, so you can check for current pricing. Plus, I get a bit of kickback if you do end up making a purchase through my link, which goes to support the channel at no additional cost to you. If you enjoyed this review, remember to give the video a like, and perhaps subscribe for more videos on Expeditionary Force in the future. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.